Hey YouTubers, it's Rob Moffat. Guys, good morning. I'm having fun today, guys. I know a lot of people probably don't watch my homemade laboratory videos, but uh, I spent so many years in laboratory, this is sort of like coming home for me, so I'm having fun. Today I want to talk about two things. We're going to talk about homemade labware, how you can make your own laboratory glassware, plasticware, and we're going to see if these ball jars are accurate. A lot of these ball jars come with uh, volumetric measurements marked on them in, in milliliters and uh, ounces. We're going to show you how you can measure them to make sure they're accurate without using another measure device, just using a thermometer and a scale. And also how you can use a thermometer and scale to make your own labware. So let's get started. If you have uh, plain old plastic jars or glass jars, you can use them to make labware. However, they're not as good as normal labware because normal wet labware is made with borosilicate glass. That means it's a glass that's very sturdy. Also, it can be heated to high temperatures and cooled frequently back and forth and it doesn't fracture. You can put it in a microwave. You can put a flame on it and it shouldn't fracture. Uh, however, I have seen in the lab borosilicate glass fracture while it was on the mixer. So anytime you're working with something that if it were to break or fracture or shatter and it would, would cause a disaster, you want to make sure you have precautions in place. You don't want to have to call uh, emergency or the Center for Disease Control. <laughs> you don't want to be on the news. You always want to make sure your, your glassware is protected in a way if something bad should happen to it, even if it is the best glass you can buy. And for laboratory purposes, the borosilicate glass is the best you can buy. However, the ball glass that uh, people use for canning jars, it can also take high temperatures, but not, I don't think you can put a flame on it, but it can be heated uh, in water baths and so on frequently. You can autoclave it and so on. It's a very sturdy glass where it has markings on it. But if you're, if you're just making stuff to store things that can be stored in glass safely or to measure components to add to others, you're not heating stuff with flame or having reactions in, in the containers, you can use plain household uh, glassware. Now, how did we manage to uh, measure or make this volumetric? We used a scale and we used a thermometer to measure water to get to 20 degrees centigrade. And then we measured out uh, at 50 uh, grams on the scale because at 20 degrees centigrade, a gram is equivalent to a milliliter. So if we have 50 grams on the scale, it would be the same as 50 milliliters. And I use this Sharpie white marking pen. It's, uh, I think it's a medium. They have one. Well, it's fine. It's fine point. It works out pretty good. I'm, 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 I'm pleasantly surprised. I'll leave a link to it if you're interested in getting them on Amazon. Um, or in the, you can get them at probably the, uh, the store or someplace. Uh, so we just made 50 ml markings on this and whenever you do make a container for measuring you should always get the weight the tear of it and this is tear 339 grams without the lid and with the lid the tear is 352 grams the tear is the same as is the weight so you can know what is your volume at any time by measuring it and that's how we did it we put this on the scale and added 50 grams at a time and then the second thing I want to tell you about making your own volumetric uh, containers is you want to make sure you use the meniscus the meniscus I got my lab book I don't know if you can see this when you measure stuff in the glassware the liquid is there's a curvature to it so you want to make sure that you're looking right below the curvature. The book says you can put a black card behind the glassware to see the, the curvature better. And where the measurement is measured at is right where that curvature, the meniscus, touches. So that would be the volume you want. Not above the curvature or in the middle, or right below, that's your meniscus. So those are the two things for making your glassware. You wanna get water at 20 degrees centigrade. Use a scale and one gram per ml for measuring. You could also use plasticware. I'll show you in the, the lab book. It has all the information you would ever want on different plasticware and what different chemical components 
react with it or doesn't react with it. Uh, no matter what type of plastic you have, polypropylene, polyethylene, Teflon, polycarbonate, PVC, and so on and so on. And they tell you whether there is no damage after 30 days, uh, or maybe for years, or there's little damage, or some sign, or not recommended. So I'll see if I can find a link. If not, just look up resistance of plastic lab work, and you can find out whether different plastics you have available are suitable for you to store. So that's how we make our own labware. You can make it with flask. You can make your own cylinders if you find something really narrow. The second thing I want to talk about in the video, and the last thing, was that I measured the, the volumes with the markings on the bell jars, the ball jars, excuse me, the ball cannon jars, and they were very accurate. I was surprised. I figured they'd be off a bit. Um, you have something also that's interesting about the ball jars is you can remove the lids and put a hole in them and then put a rubber stopper and then put a hole in the rubber stopper and you can put a vacuum on the rubber stopper and that will put a vacuum in your container. So if you need to do different experiments inside a vacuum, you can make little vacuum jars out of your ball jars. And you can also attach uh, tubing then, a uh, glass tubing, and you can heat them, introduce different gases and so on. So on. You can make them into basically a laboratory flask. Uh, you, like I said, you can't introduce flame to them or really strong uh, reactions where you might have uh, uh, something that would stress the, the glass. But you can do a lot of chemistry experiments with plain ball jars if, if you can't get a hold of your uh, borosilic bar. Your, your, your lab, borosilic. I just lost the ability to speak English. Your, your borosilicate uh, glass. Okay guys, I hope this little video is something that is helpful to you. Not a lot of people know that they can make their own glassware using a scale and 20 degrees Celsius water. And I don't know how many people have validated the measurements on the ball jars. So it's pretty handy, these ball jars. I think you could probably do a lot of lab work with the ball jars. So those are, that's the video for today. Uh, for people who don't have any scales, I'll be making a video soon on how you can make your own scale and also maybe how to make your own thermometer. Uh, and I've got some uh, potions and uh, different solutions and household chemical things coming up real soon. Uh, by the way, these... <laughs> These colors in the in the glassware, these are all just dyes. I just thought it'd be more interesting to look at for the video. I'm not making any chemical solutions in, in my kitchen. <laughs> Although some of my food might be less safe than my chemical uh, experiments, but we won't. That's another video. All right, guys, take care. Hope you come back, watch more. I'm having fun. Hope you are too.